Uh, I know I've said there's a lot of favorites this weekend just because of how many crazy coins we were able to acquire, but this is probably the nicest uh, barber half dollar I've ever hold, held in my hand. Um, this thing is just amazing. Hello everyone, we're at the Grapevine Coin Show in Grapevine, Texas. Second day, first day was crazy, second day was crazy. Let's get this video started. Alright guys, so, like Casey said, crazy two days. Uh, we're set up here with Shane, Reliable Coins, just paying over to Shane. That's me, Tristan Harrison. Tristan Harrison. Perfect. Yeah, bud. Uh, this is about all the coins that we picked up, and here's the coins that we have left in our case. I'm going to show you a few coins real quick, though, that we bought. So, bought this coin today, very hard day, 1919 Denver, uh, Walking Liberty Half. Um, bought this coin with it, 1918 Walking Liberty Half, just very hard dates. Got them for a round sheet. Um, Here's a few coins that I really liked as well. This is an AU58 Plus, 1854-0, uh, seated, seated half dollar. Um, just a really uh, hard AU58 Plus to get, and it's just a stunning, stunning coin. Um, here's a cool coin, this is an 1854, three cent silver. It has a really nice die clash on the obverse and the reverse. It's just these coins were so thin that they couldn't really uh, keep two of the designs separate, but I mean, just a crazy, crazy amount of stuff. Um, got to meet a lot of dealers, work with them. I uh, got a really interesting story for you guys Wednesday, if you guys want to stay tuned for that. But let's, let's take these home and uh, let's show you everything that we got. Hey guys, just got home from the Grapevine Coin Show. It was a wild weekend. I needed a, a good rest after all that. Um, but we spent and bought a whole bunch of coins you're gonna see a lot of interesting coins a lot of coins that are over a thousand dollars today which is pretty cool I'm trying to move into that sector a little bit more bought a few cheaper coins as well but I think we went through and with everything all said and done I think we're around fifty thousand dollars in inventory this weekend of what we sold and bought and stuff that we also brought home so it's it was just a insane weekend but let me show you guys some things that we bought and sold at the show I did like a brief video about them because they're pretty interesting and rare pieces you don't see every day, so let's roll into that clip. So as you saw there, there was SLQs and three cent silvers that we bought in a whole group. And then we had someone that we knew that would pay the most and we sold it to them so we can get our capital back and then go to the next day and buy more stuff. It was kind of strange because there was a big deal that happened on Friday. And sometimes at a show when you run to a big deal and you don't have a ton of capital, you have to basically get the coins, sell the coins, so you can get your capital back so the next day you can get that capital to use for Saturday. So we ended up buying like I think $20,000 or a little bit more than that in coins. Got about I think a little bit over 20000 with other stuff that we sold and the things that we bought. And the check transferred the next day. Casey went back to the bank and we got a whole, uh, you know, we got the checks ready and the money ready. And then we hit the home run on Saturday and bought some more stuff. So. Very crazy weekend, met a lot of good dealers, was able to do like a really good deal. And uh, so let's show you guys some coins without further ado. We hope you enjoy them. So this is a slew of everything that we brought home this weekend after all the stuff that we bought and then sold and then all the stuff that it's just, it's been a crazy weekend. But let's start off by showing you guys a few cool pieces, a few things that we have different stories for. Uh, up first is this 1947 Walking Liberty Half Dollar. I bought this one because of the grade, 66 plus. I think it's a $3,000 coin in 67. And so I thought this one was really nice. Going to see what CAC thinks about it. I don't see too many issues with it, apart from just uh, the normal issue of, you know, 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock on the leg. But I think this one might have a shot at passing. 
but definitely going to take a trip to CAC on this one. Flip over the coin, a little hazy on the, uh, kind of the breast here, but I think it's still pretty nice. And uh, very happy to, that for that with that coin. I think there's a lot of prospects with that. Bought a few original kind of uh, cap bust pieces here. It's an 1837 cap bust uh, half dime. Just really original. And uh, I always like buying stuff like this because uh, we don't have too many clients for these yet, but I really want to get into that because I run into a lot of good stuff nowadays and uh, want to definitely start to build that. Got a cap bust dime as well. This one's kind of interesting. Came out of an old collection. A uh, guy submitted a lot of nice coins and and you're going to see a few more of these in, in today's episode. But really enjoy the look on this coin. And uh, still has some luster on it as well. Um, just a stunner for sure. Hey guys, are you enjoying the video so far? If you are, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts on what coin you think is your favorite. Which one do you enjoy the most? Uh, make sure to subscribe for more videos because we're coming out with them every single week. Got an interesting few stories to share with you this week. Um, there's a stolen chain that we want to talk about. Um, there's also, uh, you know, the, how we got into these coins, what happened with that, all that stuff is going to be happening this week. So we make sure to stay tuned and let's get back to today's video. But, uh, this coin over the weekend, it came, it came in the mail, but it's a nice, uh, 1884 dimple. Uh, it just, it has some really strong cheek on the obverse of the coin. And someone would say, why is that 63? And if you flip it over, it's got some really just ugly haze on the reverse, in my opinion. Now, just not too pretty. It doesn't have that kind of deeper mirrors that you would normally like. And there's a few kind of distracting spots, but still a nice affordable coin. Not too many of these in dimple, uh, as you would see, you know, with the S-Mint. Um, and so, very fortunate with that. Here's one of my favorite coins of the weekend. It's something that you don't see every day. But first, here's this 1944S. A little bit of a tougher date for sure. Um, you know, really beautiful blast white coin. Then an old series holder. When you flip it over, it's got that same kind of trend going on the reverse. Very tough to find in 66 and 67. I think this coin is around a $500, $550 coin in this grade. And so people are on the hunt for these, and that's why I like to buy them. Even if they're like 64s or, 60, or 63s, 44S is a better date. Um, here's my favorite coin of the weekend because it's just awesome. So this is 1871 gold dollar. There's only 3,900 of these that were ever minted, which is the reason why you should buy an 1871 gold dollar when you see it. We bought this one from Reliable Coins. He was set up next to us. And the story on this coin was his dad bought this one in an ICG MS65 Plus PL holder. And someone might say, you know, okay, you know, it is what it is, but definitely a big discrepancy here in terms of the grade that it received. I think there's less than 10 of these in proof like uh, between PCGS and NGC. So buying one of these is very hard and very rare and uh, was very fortunate to be able to buy this from, from Shane. I paid up on this coin, but I, I knew in my bones that I could find someone to buy it. And we ended up selling that coin before we got home, which is okay. I bought a few dimples this weekend also. This is uh, 1883cc uh, DMPL. You kind of see a little chatter out in the, in the fields here, but the cheek is super clean. I mean, I think this one, um, if it was reconsidered, could possibly go 65 dimple. But just a really nice fields in this coin, really nice bowl luster as you can see. Got uh, kind of the matching pair here a little bit. Got the 84cc as well. This one is a little bit more chatter on, on the cheek, but it's still a really nice, beautiful coin. I uh, can't go wrong with some nice dimples. Morgans aren't too crazy for me. Um, with this weekend, I didn't buy too many, but I did buy a few things that we all can learn from. Here's an 1831 cap bus half dollar, and this one is very original. I think I'm going to send this one to CAC um, this week because the last few that have sold have sold anywhere, anywhere between 725 and 750 without a CAC sticker. And the one recently that has sold with a CAC sticker sold for around $1,250. And so getting a CAC sticker on this coin would mean a lot for it. I think that it would have so much more value. And the reason why it's people would pay a lot more for a CAC sticker with these coins is because they were mistreated and they were experimented on. And uh, a lot of these coins would never get a CEC sticker. Most of them um, were just treated so badly and cleaned and dipped and everything else. And that's just kind of the nature of the business and understanding a little bit more. Here's another coin that's really one of my favorites of the weekend. 1854O 
seated half dollar with uh, with arrows. This one's great AU58 plus by PCGS. I mean, you can really see the luster around the star still. Just a, a tremendous coin. Um, I bought this one from a friend of mine named Ted Williams. And we actually know the AU58 plus uh, registry guy that likes to buy AU58 plus coins. He hasn't gotten into the seated space, but he said he was going to start with this coin. So very happy with that. Thank you, Rick, for the business. Um, if you guys are wanting to see what uh, we have, go to AcousticCollectibles.com because we would love to share with you all these nice pieces and uh, maybe you guys can pick one up. So we bought two barbers this weekend, two really nice PQ barbers. The first one is a 1902 Barber Quarter, graded MS64 by PCGS. This one came out of this Cat Bust Half collection. Um, so it's a beautiful coin overall. I, I love the luster on the coin. I'm not sure if this one would cack. But I'm hoping so. If it doesn't sell, uh, you can kind of see a few hits here on the cheek. But other than that, just a really nice, spectacular coin. And there's a little haze right there, as you can see, down the nose and right above her where it says trust. Um, that's something that's a little bit of a, an issue for me, but I don't know if I think John might pass this coin, to be honest. Um, uh, I know I've said that there's a lot of favorites this weekend just because of how many crazy coins we were able to acquire. But this is probably the nicest uh, barber half dollar I've ever hold, held in my hand. Um, this thing is just amazing. Um, this is one of the first coins we bought on Friday and we, we are holding this one for Trent because he's such a great guy and we want to help him with his collection. But if Trent ever passed on this thing or if he ever wanted to sell it, I would buy this sucker back in a heartbeat. Like I said, a lot of coins, some of them are really hard to find CAC approved and that's why Trent's hunting them. This is a 1913D barber half. Uh, great MS63 and a CAC approved. And if you look at this coin, I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm going to use Trent's words, baller. This thing is a baller coin. And uh, a lot of these were selling for under $1,000, I believe, or around $1,000. But the last one that sold, that was CAC approved, an NGC holder sold for um, $1,380. So there is a huge premium for CAC coins, especially higher grade, especially coins that you don't find every single day. And so we showed this to a few people and their jaw dropped on the ground and reasonably so. It's just a really beautiful coin. Uh, here's another coin from that Cat Bust uh, dime collection. This is an 1837 reeded edge, uh, you know, Cat Bust half. Just look at this luster on this coin. I mean, it's, it's an insane piece and uh, this one didn't last long either. Just a tremendous coin. There's a lot of chatter, and I think it might have been wiped, but it does have, um, you know, it is still market acceptable. That's what PCGS said about it, and I've never, I haven't seen luster on uh, a reeded edge like this ever. And so, finding a coin like this, I had to take a risk on it. I paid twelve hundred fifty dollars for this one. It was a little bit more than what most people want to pay, but sometimes when something jumps out at you like this, you have to jump on it. You have to give it a try. That's just something about growing that most people have to work on and uh, move towards. Two SOQs here. One's a 24, one's a 24D. This is a DL Hansen Collection uh, SOQ. And the thing about this one is it's really, really close to full head, which is pretty nice. I do like the, the overall look of the coin. It has a little darkness in the left side there. A little toning, but that's okay. When you flip it over, it's got that same, uh, kind of a little bit of a, a darkness, but the luster is still pretty strong here. Do love this coin a lot. Hoping to find a new home for it soon. The other one is not as strong in the head, and you can see why. It's kind of just that little, that flatness, and I think a lot of them came like this for this one. Um, and so, it's got a little toning above the head here. It is CAC approved. Just a really nice over, coin overall. I think this one has a little bit of a stronger luster to it. And... Uh, yeah, just very stunning, very stunning. I bought this coin here. This is an 1854 three cent silver. And the reason why I did is because a lot of them look cleaned or dipped out, but this one is 100% original in my mind. And uh, when you actually look at it up close, there's a, it's actually struck through on uh, the back. So the design on the back is actually coming through the front. And a lot of that has to do with just, um, you know, how thin the coin was. But luster is really nice. The coin overall is beautiful. A little haze on the coin, which is okay. That's something you can expect for a lower grade type of three cent silver. And uh, here's something that uh, we bought because of the holder and because of the CAC sticker. So this is 1881 CC grade MS63 CAC by PCGS. And this one's in a Rattler holder. 
If you guys look at this cheek here, and there's the reason why I bought it, I mean, the cheek is very strong, very nice. I think this one could have had a 64, in my opinion, if it was reconsidered today. And uh, I thought this one was nice enough to uh, pick up. I'm going to give you guys a breakdown and a little bit of my experience with this one. So this one is, uh, a lot of them sell for 750 725 in this grade. But the last one on, um, the last one I think on Heritage in the old holder sale a few months ago, sold for 10 1020 it was in a rattle like this one but it wasn't CAC approved and so when the dealer offered me this one for 900 I took a risk because a lot of these are very sought after and people will pay 25 percent 30 percent more than what regular ones are selling for in a traditional PCGS holder just like this one um, ran into some better date walkers here you're gonna see one here see one here and see one there the first one's a 1919 Denver probably the best date of the three uh, this one's AU53 and is CAC approved. Another coin that you can, it's very hard to find CAC approved, but a little luster, I'm sorry, a little toning on the, the top side of the obverse on the reverse. Looks pretty nice as well. Has some remaining luster there too. Um, just a stunning piece. I wish I could cl collect and keep some of these, but when you're spending over $2,000 on some coins, it just gets a little bit too taxing for you. You gotta, you gotta sell them, you know what I mean? And so... Bought another seated half here. This one is just really flashy, and that's the reason why I bought it. Has a few hairlines on it, but still is market acceptable. Uh, when you flip over the coin, has a few spots, but that's okay. A little bit more hazy on the reverse than the obverse. And uh, this is, I think this is the second coin or the first coin that we bought on Friday. And I thought it was pretty nice. And most of the time it has a little bit more character when it's a little bit proof likey and people want to pay uh, that premium for it. Here's a 35S, which is a little bit of a tougher date also. This one's great, MS64 by PCGS. A really nice flashy coin. Um, no distracting spots, no issues with it, and so that's kind of why I picked it up. A lot of the uh, wholesalers and dealers really like to look out for these because uh, it's, just, it's just something people are always on the hunt for, for their collection. In the 30s and the 20s and the teens, that's just something that you should really be on the hunt out for because you're going to find the right collector for that, and they're going to want to pay you a premium for it. Here's 1853 uh, arrows and rays seated half. A little bit of a distracting spot there right underneath the neck, but, I mean, just a nice wholesome coin. You can see the rays here on the reverse. Wanted to take a risk on this one and pay a little bit more than I would normally do, but I'm just finding one in this condition, and the arrows and rays, I really love the series of that, and so had to pick it up, had to try it out. Um, this is the 1918 Walking Liberty Half, another very tough date to get a hold of. This one is the Gen 4 holder of the PCGS uh, kind of edition that they had way back. Someone paid like six extra dollars to put this in this weird uh, kind of uh, weird kind of paper, I guess. But really nice luster on this coin, really beautiful, something that uh, a collector would really like. And uh, I, as soon as I saw this coin, I picked it up and I said I had to buy it and give it a shot. This is around a $2,000 coin, so um, you definitely cut off a few collectors with the price, but like I said, you're going to run into somebody that really likes it and wants it for their collection. Here's the 1825 uh, Cat Bust Half, another coin very hard to find, CAC approved. Beautiful original coin, a little dark, but that's what's to be expected on these, especially in AU50 condition. Just a really nice coin, still has some remaining luster on the reverse and really wanting to move into cat bus tasks because they're really a nice uh, really nice group. So I uh, bought a few commemoratives this weekend. This is probably one of my favorites. It's the 1922 Grant, uh, great MS65. Have a collector that really wants to move into these. And so finding a Grant like this is good and I can't wait for him to see it in hand. Uh, got one more walker here and then a few kind of miscellaneous coins that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, we try to buy Stuff that's expensive, but also things that people would like for their collection. It's a 1945S Walker. Try to buy these in 66 CAC approved because they do sell pretty well. And people do like uh, just that extra added green bean to it. But no distracting spots, no haze on this coin, and uh, that's something that's good. So here's the miscellaneous kind of group here that we bought. Uh, 81 o Morgan Dollar, really nice uh, cheek on this coin. I mean, I think this one could have been a 64 all day. But, uh, you know, just something that's uh, nice to pick up for the shop. Some pretty good luster. I don't know if something was used on the reverse here. 
to make the luster come out. It's just kind of a weird toning to it. Bought a few other rattlers here. I uh, bought this 35D Boone. I've um, just been buying commemoratives like crazy. I have a few that I bought this weekend for my collection. Can't wait to share that with you. Um, this one I bought because it has some nice kind of toning to it. Um, there's kind of a little bit of a red and brown. And I thought that was pretty unique. And so try to buy stuff with a little bit of added character to it. Luster's still pretty strong. And 87s are a little bit tougher to find with color. And so that one was pretty nice. Got a few more AU58 PLs this week from the same guy. We showed one from the Houston show when he sold us one, but I'm going to be offering these ones super cheap. Just stuff that I don't really like to hold on to. So make sure to check out our website if you guys are interested. Got a few buffaloes at Gray Sheet this weekend. Got a 66 here for 46 and these both for 25 So probably going to make a few bucks on them and just try to move them. So make sure you guys are watching out for the deals. I've uh, got this really nice original 78cc as well. So... You guys are really going to love checking out the website, and I hope you guys enjoy what I had to say, and let's cut it to the outro. All right, guys, so if you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts on just the whole video. What do you guys think? What's been your greatest show experience? What have you guys been finding lately? Subscribe if you're new, and check out our podcast, the Freedom Coin Show podcast. I'll have a link for that down below, but I'll see you guys in the next video.